this coming summer, it will be 85 years ago that the deportation of Jewish citizens from The Hague II began. In less than 10 months, more than 12,000 Jewish men, women and children were transported and killed. The systematic murder of The Hague's Jewish citizens was, and still is, one of the greatest horrors ever to have befallen this city. However, the Nazis did not succeed in their attempt to extinguish centuries of Jewish life in our city. There is still a thriving Jewish community in The Hague, even today. Although, of course, it is much smaller than it was before the Second World War. In 1940, The Hague was the home to the Netherlands' second largest Jewish community. And the pain of losing so many lives is still palpable, even after all these years. After the war, very few traces remained of all those who had perished in the concentration and death camps. Their possessions had been looted and many signs of their presence had disappeared. Every photo, every document or object serves as a valuable reminder of the victims and a warning of what racism can lead to. The film collection that was donated to the Hague Municipal Archive at the end of last year is therefore all the more remarkable. It consists of more than two hours of footage recorded between 1938 and 1942 by the Hague Butcher and amateur filmmaker Maurits van Kleef. Almost 80 years later, his family donated the films to the Municipal Archive, which has had them digitized. Today, we live in an era in which making videos using our smartphones, for example, is nothing out of the ordinary. But at that time, not many people owned a film camera. We can also count ourselves lucky that Maurits van Kleef's films survived the war and the many years since then. Maurits himself was arrested, deported and murdered in Mauthausen. His wife, young son and baby daughter miraculously survived the hardships of the war. But his wife died shortly afterwards due to illness. What makes this legacy on celluloid so special? Today, in 2022, it offers us a unique but also moving glimpse of Jewish life in The Hague in those days. Particularly given the fact that Maurits shot some of the footage when the Netherlands was already occupied and the Nazi menace was rapidly approaching. In the films, we see Maurits himself, of course, his family, and his butcher shop on Hobema Plein. And there's also footage of him on the football field and at the cattle market. But Maurits also filmed other people, family, friends and acquaintances. For example, the wedding of a young Jewish couple, Aaron Kosman and Kitty Fresco even in the spring of 1941. A citizen of The Hague helped to identify them. Aaron and Kitty did not survive the horrors of the war. Or the family of Barend Sander de Groot, for example, who, together with his wife, ran a fabric and haberdashery shop in the old Jewish quarter of The Hague. Just a stone's throw away from where our town hall stands today. Like Maurits, they were hard-working business owners with sweet young daughters, all of them happily smiling at the camera. Two years later, in June 1943, the whole family was murdered in Sobibor. When the municipal archive received this film, it was not known who was on it. Further, to a public campaign, Barend Sander de Groot, his wife Eva Allegro and their daughters Anna and Theodora 
could be identified. The Hague will never forget them. Just as we fondly remember Maurits van Kleef, his wife Lena Boekdrukker, and all the other 12,000 victims of the Holocaust from The Hague. Even, even if it's only their name which still lives on.